Now one of the things which is tricky to do sometimes and get used to is getting used to the brushes that you use. So when you're using something like a double zero, like this one here, or as big as I go, which is like a size five or six, um, then it's trying to get used to how that then bristles tend to bounce on the paper. And also trying to pick up the very fine tip of the, the brush itself. That varies because it depends obviously on the quality of the brush, the type of bristles that's on there as well. For example, these are quite bouncy because they're sable, but this one, is not quite as balanced, it's nice and firm, which I prefer for a detail brush, which is a synthetic bristle as well. So the idea is when you're practicing strokes on a paper, just load the big brush up first of all. Let's go for some red. Oh yeah, nice and bright. Here we go, you ready? Let's go for it. So the thing with this one, it's fully loaded, so you can very lightly touch the paper as you can see, and then you can gradually increase the pressure as you go along and then lift off again to get a nice tapered point. So you can come really, really fine, as fine as that. So I'll do that a little bit quicker now. So a little bit like that, so you can get some nice, imagine if you're doing like a wave effect. If you're doing a C's, not in red, obviously. Like a, like a little wave idea. So that's the beauty about using a large brush. If you've got a decent one with a really good tip on it like this, then you can just very lightly touch the paper, then press slightly harder, then ease off the pressure when you come to a point. So you can really, Go back in there, really fine tune it if you want to, and get as fine as you want, like so. So, I'll give us some ideas on, on the idea with a large brush. Now, if you go for the smaller brush, just give that one a wash out a minute. Let's go for some purpley blue color. Now, if I fully load this brush with a smaller brush, yeah, great, we can go quite thin again. You can press on harder to go thicker or wider, then ease off the pressure just to go to a finer tip. However, if you want to get even finer, let's get some more paint on there. What I would suggest you do, tap it on some tissue once or twice, and then you can come in with a very fine tip, and you can really get those fine details. Look at the difference. When I start off with that one, you start off with less paint on your brush, and go really fine. So it's controlling that paint and knowing how much paint to have on your brush to begin with, and whatever brush size you use. I mean, that's just one example, or two examples of brushes, should I say. I mean, the other example we've got is something like a coma brush, which, if this is used, will then give you more than one line at once, which is quite handy, <laughs> right? But that'll give us some ideas. And you've also got chisel brushes as well. There's a variety of ones out there. So what I suggest you do, see what brushes you've got within your kit, have a play with them by trying different pressure and different ideas as you go along. So don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions, I'll certainly do my best to answer them for you. So until next time around, see you soon. Bye bye for now. If you'd like to see more watercolor painting tips, head to patreon.com forward slash the Devon artist and you'll see my full list of step-by-step -step video tutorials on how to paint wildlife in watercolor. Where you get also the project photo, the outline drawing for that month's project as well, and even a step-by-step -step handwritten or hand-typed by me full PDF on that particular current month's project. So come and join me and let's get painting together. And don't forget to click on like, subscribe and share. And please leave a comment down below as well. I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts and find out what you've been up to on your painting ventures. So until next time, bye-bye for now.